Blood Death Knights have been really strong in raids throughout Dragonflight, and most of their lifespan, really. And they're getting a substantial set of buffs and reworks in patch 11.0 that's going to make them even stronger in raids, and actually pretty strong in Mythic Plus as well. There's never been a better time to be dead. Okay, I recorded that intro mere moments before Blizzard dropped their big tank nerf nuclear bomb last week, and you know what? It unfortunately is still true. Blood DK has taken some significant nerfs to their sustained self-healing, especially while solo. I did some uh, delve content and got absolutely blasted in half by some of it. But that wasn't the only thing that made the class good. It's not even close to the only thing that made the class good. And so Blood DK is still good and unfortunately still fun and more interesting than it was in Dragonflight, even with those nerfs that are also accompanying the fun redesign. The most significant change to Blood Decay is the Death Strike can no longer count a damage event towards Death Strike multiple times. This means the correct way to play Blood Decay defensively is to Death Strike every five seconds. Not reactively, not skillfully, but robotically, like filing your taxes. Five seconds. Like it or not, you should Death Strike. This is at odds with the design of the rest of the class, but most notably it's, it's at odds with Red Thirst and the Sand Lane Hero Talent Tree both of which want you to Death Strike a lot more often than every five seconds in order to consume all the runic power you generate. So what do you do? Do you waste healing by Death Striking too often or waste your runic power by, by letting it sit? I think you waste some Death Strike healing ultimately. You cast Death Strike more often than every five seconds and you just live with it. You never cast it back to back now. You'll never go Death Strike, Death Strike. But you really never should have before. So basically you're just going to play the way you did before and accept that Sometimes you'll be a little weaker at self-healing than you used to be, but still very strong and mostly the same. There are several other small changes as well. I am not going to remake the rest of the video to account for small numerical changes that Blizzard has been tweaking back and forth and will probably continue to tinker with even more. Things like Dancing Rune Weapon Heart Strikes now grant 6 runic power instead of 10, or Blood Drinker grants 15% damage reduction instead of 20%. Those were the two most interesting other nerfs, and I just said them. Um, there was one buff I want to point out before letting the rest of the video roll through though, as I made it initially, and that is to Bone Storm. It does now count toward consuming Bone Shield charges for resetting the cooldown of Dancing Rune Weapon with Insatiable Blade, and it deals damage with Shattering Bone. I just got a 750,000 Shattering Bone crit by casting Bone Storm, and then also got all the damage from Bone Storm. That's actually really good. Okay, take it away, me. Hi, it's Lerald, and today I'm going to talk about how to play a Blood Death Knight in patch 11.0. The War Within is right around the corner, it is time to get hyped, but first, don't forget to like and subscribe. The majority of changes to Blood Decay have occurred within the talent tree, they are quite substantial, and here's a quick overview. Tons of offensive cooldowns have been buffed, A Bomb Limb no longer grants Bone Shield, Ripping Enemies does grant Bone Shield, Soul Reaper is a core talent now and lots of two-point talents have been shaved down into one-point talents, which gives a lot more room to play around with talents deep in the tree. Tier sets have also supposedly been disabled. This will be fine for DK. It's, it's fine. Okay, let's talk about talents, and we'll start with the left-hand tree. As you can see, things have really moved around a lot. Unholy Ground is up here. Uh, you know, a, a Runa Continuation is now up here. Blinding Sleet is a bit easier to take. IBF is just isn't in the tree, or I guess it's a very top node here instead of being down there. It's also just a baseline two minute cooldown. You're not having to spend multiple points to get that power. There's a lot of other stuff that's moved up in the tree. Unholy Bond is now, instead of being down here, it's up here in a one pointer. Icy Talons, instead of being down here, it's now up here in a one pointer. This means you're able to take talents like Wraith Walk or Asphyxiate and Blinding Sleet. Kind of is up to you exactly how you want to spec around. I'm playing around with Wraith Walk because I've been doing some solo content. I will link what I think is a proper talent for tanking dungeons, a talent tree for tanking dungeons. But, you know, I think Soul Reaper now with, with it being right here, there's no reason not to take it even in Mythic Plus. I just don't think it's, you know, it's it offers enough single target damage to justify its existence compared to talents like Wraith Walk and so on. Insidious Chill has been moved toward the center of the tree, so it's now easier to justify taking. You're not 
kind of having to choose between taking some throughput option in this, which means hypothetically speaking, DPS DKs will now be taking Insidious Chill as well, so you won't have to have a Blood DK, but you should because they are incredibly good. Rune Mastery is still intact. As you can see, Subduing Grasp here is a new talent. It makes it so that when you pull enemies, they do slightly less damage to you for a little bit. And Death's Echo, which has really been a capstone quality talent for a long time, has finally been made into a proper capstone talent. You're also able to justify taking Blood Draw now that it's a one point talent here, and Runic Protection is its kind of competitor here for getting down to take Path of the or Will of the Necropolis. And, you know, Runic Protection, 3% crit. I mean, being you're already crit immune, that doesn't matter, but 6% more armor, that's pretty worthless. Blood Draw, quite a bit stronger. Now you have several new interesting capstone talents that I'll just emphasize here. Null Magic makes it so that you take 10% less magic damage, which is... Whew, that's crazy. And then also, magic effects on you, harmful magic effects that is, are reduced in duration by 35%. So hypothetically, there's a chance that some like stacking debuffs that exist could maybe be so short that they're not able to refresh. That's pretty cool. There's also this talent here, Unyielding Will. Anti-Magic Shell's cooldown is increased by 20 seconds, so if you're taking that along with Anti-Magic Barrier, you go from 60 down to 40 and then back up to 60, so not great, but it also now will remove harmful magic effects when activated. This seems more like a PvP thing, not as great to me. A-Bomb Limb is still the same basic skill, but it no longer generates Bone Shield charges. Death's Echo is still what it is, it just moved down here instead of being over there. And finally, Vestigial Shell, casting Anti-Magic Shell grants two nearby allies a lesser Anti-Magic Shell that absorbs up to 286,798 magic damage and reduces the duration of harm. You know, it's Anti-Magic Shell, but it's a weaker version. So I like Vestigial Shell. I like Null Magic. I think they're both pretty good. This is very similar to a talent setup I would run for Mythic Plus. I think basically the only thing I would change is I'd probably just run Asphyxiate instead. You can take some, you know, you have some room to play around with stuff if you want to get March of Darkness, if you want to get Grip of the Dead, that'll work. Maybe you could drop Gloom Ward and take Grip of the Dead. There you go. There's your Mythic Plus talent tree right here on the left-hand side. Don't worry about what's in the middle. That's just um, level 80 hero talent tree. We'll be playing around with that in a month, but yeah, it's, it's not here yet. And then in the right hand tree, things have changed somewhat and there's definitely some pretty interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Top of the tree, still got Marrow, Ren, Blood Boil, Heart Strike, Vampiric Blood, that's pretty normal. But Bone Collector is a new talent. It makes it so that when you would pull an enemy, you generate a charge of Bone Shield. And this makes it so that a bomb limb will still generate Bone Shield charges, not the massive amount of them. But as you can see, if I grip this guy here, Boom, Bone Shield Charge. If I walk into this pack of dudes here with A-Bomb Limb up, let's see if it'll work. Well, I'm not, I'm not in melee. I, you have to not be in melee range in order for Bone Shield or A-Bomb Limb to try and grip. So once I'm out of melee range and it's actually attempting to grip, Bone Shield Charge is galore. But if you're hanging out, you know, giving them a smooch and smacking them with your slappy hands, then it won't be trying to grip them. And so no charges. So there it is. Ossified Vitriol is a strangely named new talent that makes it so that when you lose a bone shield charge your next marrow rend will hit 15 percent harder this stacks up to 75 percent and this is sort of uh, part of a whole philosophy that they seem to be going for unspoken philosophy uh philosophy but i think you know i think it's kind of clear of trying to buff dk's damage because it has kind of stunk for a long time and now it's looking really nice and they're buffing it in single target they are buffing it in aoe and let's continue on down the tree Heartbreaker is still what it is. Leeching Strike has been kind of moved over to the side and it's no longer a mandatory or not that it was ever a mandatory talent, but like mandatory for getting to Blood Tap. You can go through Gorfine's Grasp, which has been moved over here instead. Gives you a bit more pathing. It would be nice if they just killed Leeching Strike entirely or like, I don't know, tripled the value. So it'd be good, but ain't doing that. Insatiable Blade, this whole path of stuff, Dancing Rune Weapon down to Everlasting Bond is still the same. You'll notice that Rune Tap has been moved over here to the right hand side of the tree. Again, kind of not a talent you're really going to take in the majority of situations. Not impossible to take it, but never really been all that great of a talent. Relish and Blood has stayed the same, but Perseverance of the Ebon Blade has been cut from two points to one. 
And, you know, having 6% versatility when you use Crimson Scourge, that's pretty good. You really do have the two options. You can either get a bit of runic power and healing when you use Crimson Scourge, or you can get versatility. I think I kind of prefer the versatility, personally. Now, you'll notice that Blood Decay has kind of lost some resource generation, specifically Empower Rune Weapon is no longer available. It's, I mean, it's gone. And obviously that does mean there are fewer runes to play with, but Blizzard has kind of compensated for that with some buffs here in the tree. And I'm gonna go ahead and show off the kind of main one right here now, and that is Consumption. Consumption is now a good talent. It has been buffed along with Blood Drinker. They've both been buffed pretty substantially. They've been moved into a different point in the tree, the bottom third of the tree. Consumption now is a 30 second cooldown that gives two runes in addition to doing AOE damage and healing you for a large amount of healing. It also makes your Blood Plague tick faster for the next eight seconds. And then the talent below it, Carnage makes it so that when you use Blood Drinker or Consumption, they feed into your Mastery, and any time an enemy hits your Blood Shield, the, the Mastery Shield that you get for casting Death Strike, or also now Blood Drinker and Consumption, the chances of Blood Drinker and Consumption have a chance to, uh, the cooldowns rather, have a chance to be reset. This works about one proc per minute or so, which means you pretty much get about three Blood Drinkers or three Consumptions per minute, which is pretty good. Blood Drinker is maybe a little bit less interesting. It gives you 20% damage reduction while you're channeling it, which is great for raid. And that lasts for five seconds if you finish the channel completely. It also ge uh, generates 20 additional runic power while you are blasting it out. So 10 for using a rune and then another 20. 30 runic power for a single GCD, a single rune, real good. So these are great talents. Blood Drinker very much for raid consumption for AoE, for Mythic Plus, pretty straightforward. So this is the talent setup that I have been playing around with and I really like. You could justify taking Umbilicus Eternus. I don't really know what I would want to give up in order to get that. I guess maybe it could be Sanguine Ground, but that's 6% more damage and healing. That's pretty hard to give up. There's this new talent here, Bloodied Blade. It makes it so that parrying Gives you a very small stacking strength buff, and then when it hits eight stacks, so once you've parried eight attacks in a row, your next parry will eat all of those charges and do effectively three heart strikes at once, or two heart strikes at once, rather, and then also give you 10% strength for six seconds. A pretty big strength buff, and then reset that stacking buff, which you again then stack up by parrying a bunch. So you could drop that and take Umbilicus Eternus if you really wanted to be more tanky, more defensive. Little boring for my taste, so I'd rather have the damage from Bloodied Blade. And then you'll note that we're taking Bone Storm, the traditionally horrendous talent at the, at the capstone level of the Blood Decay Tree. Generally pretty reviled, terrible talent, not so much anymore. It no longer consumes runic power at all, so it's no longer fighting with Death Strike in order to function, in order to do its job. It now eats your Bone Shield charges. When it eats your Bone Shield charges, it will then give you a buff, the same old buff that it had, where you radiate damage to nearby enemies, you heal up to 15% per second based on how many enemies you're hitting, and the duration that it has is based on the number of Bone Shield charges, so if you eat 10 charges, it will last for 10 seconds, and then it will also regenerate a Bone Shield charge every second. This is great. Now, obviously, there's that little scary spot. Okay, you hit Bone... You, you, you have 10 Bone Shield charges. You hit Bone Storm. Now you have zero Bone Shield charges. One second will pass, and you're good. You can Marrow Rend there just to give yourself a little bit of breathing room. But still, you know, like, that's not so great. And that there's kind of a fix for that in this talent right here. Reinforced Bones gives you 12 Bone Shield charges as your maximum. This makes it a lot easier to kind of be safe. Uh, bone Storm still only consumes 10 Bone Shield charges, even though it says it eats all of them. These two talents don't interact with each other, so you're able to stack up to 11 or 12, then hit Bone Storm, and now you're good to go. You're fine. Additionally, there's a bit of weirdness where Bone Storm, even though it eats your Bone Shield charges, it does not work with Insatiable Blade. It does not give you cooldown reduction on your Dancing Rune weapon. Instead, it works with Icy Talons as though it were the old version of Bone Storm where it cost runic power. It was a runic power spender. And so you can run in with a bunch of Bone Shield charges, hit Bone Storm, and then very quickly stack up to full on Icy Talons, but you won't get anything out of Insatiable Blade. You know, great quality of life. Quality? Eh, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, this means that I'm not taking Purgatory. 
I like to live dangerously. You can get away with not running Purgatory. That's okay, uh, you know, or you could obviously, you could give up Bloodshot if you really wanted to. You could give up Bloodshot and uh, I guess Carnage. Those would probably be the two that I would give up to pull that off and have Purgatory. But for me, I don't, I don't think I need it. If I had to pick up Gorfine's Grasp in order to, you know, in order to make something work for Raid, I would probably drop Hemostasis or Voracious in order to get that. And then additionally, I'll just highlight this talent here, this new one, Tightening Grasp. It is it is contingent on having Gorfine's Grasp, so I'm probably not going to have this most of the time. You're probably not going to have Gorfine's Grasp or Tightening Grasp unless you really need it, but it cuts the cooldown by 30 seconds. That's okay. 90 second cooldown, still a little long, but it also turns it into a three second AoE silence. And that's pretty neat. I wouldn't say that that's really competing with like, you know, where Vengeance Demon Hunter has been more recently. It's still a fairly long cooldown, but it's okay. Okay, now let's talk about the Blood DK rotation. Blood Death Knight is a tank built around maintaining a lot of buffs and managing a lot of resources. You don't want to let any of the buffs fall off and you don't want to waste any of the resources, and if you're able to manage both of those things, you're actually pretty great. You want to maintain Bone Shield 100% of the time. The maximum number of Bone Shield charges, charges, stacks, whatever, is 10 or 12 with reinforced bones. You always want to maintain at least 5 so that it reduces the cost of your Death Strike by 5 Runic Power. Death's Caress and Marrow Rin both generate Bone Shield charges, Marrow Rin generates 3 and costs 2 runes, Death's Caress generates 2 and costs 1. This makes Death's Caress more efficient, but Marrow Rin deals a lot more damage, so it is a better option unless you are forced out of melee range. Basically, that's the one advantage that Death's Caress has. If you have Dancing Rune Weapon active, your skills will hit 3 times, so Marrow Rin will generate 9 Bone Shield charges, Death's Caress will generate 6. This can be a great way to keep your Bone Shield charges up for cheap, and it will allow you to deal more damage and generate more Runic Power during that Dancing Rune window uh, by using Heart Strike. In order to not cap on Runic Power, you also want to cast Death Strike fairly often. If you use it at least every 10 seconds, then you will easily maintain Icy Talons. It's really not very hard. You're probably going to want to use it a lot more often than that to heal yourself and prevent capping on Runic Power anyways, but 10 seconds is sort of the bare minimum. In addition to this, you want to maintain Death and Decay at all times. It's pretty simple to do. You cast it where you're standing. You get a lot of extra added damage. You also get added haste and added damage and healing from talents. If you need to move, then you want to just either wait to cast Death and Decay again or cast it where you are moving to. That's pretty much it. Once you've managed everything else, you can use Heart Strike to keep your runes active, keep your runes like cooling down and generating runic power. It generates 15 runic power by default and potentially up to 25 in AoE. Finally, rotationally, you want to use Soul Reaper to execute low health enemies. It's, it's pretty basic. It's just if an enemy is below 35% health, you hit them with Soul Reaper on cooldown. It does an insane amount of damage. That's all there is to it. And then I guess finally, finally, Blood Boil is your like last resort filler skill. It's a very simple AoE damage skill. It has no cost. It just has a short cooldown. It's extremely important for picking up threat at the start of pulls, but otherwise it's mainly just used to fill empty globals. That's pretty much all there is to that. Now let's talk about cooldowns. Cooldowns, cooldowns, cooldowns. There are so many of them now for Blood DK. You have A-Bomb Limb, Dancing Rune Weapon, Bone Storm, Blood Drinker, Consumption, Tombstone, and Raise Dead, and that's only the offensive ones. That's a lot of cooldowns. There is a lot to keybind, but in terms of complexity, they're actually fairly simple. You can hold cooldowns if you're near the end of a pull, but more often than not, you can just fire them as soon as they come up. A-Bomb Limb is particularly effective at establishing threat early on in pulls, and it brings ranged enemies into melee with ease. Dancing Rune Weapon will grant extra Bone Shield charges with Marrow Rend and Death's Caress while it's active and generate more Runic Power from Heart Strike, so it's really excellent on, you know, on top of the 40% parry chance it gives, and the uh, Bone Shield charges it generates when you use it. Tombstone deals damage based on consuming Bone Shield charges, so you always want to have at least five of those active before you cast it, and you also always want to be in a Death and Decay circle as well, so that you get the triple damage bonus from Shattering Bone. Like A-Bomb Limb, Bone Storm is really good at establishing AoE threat, especially early on in pulls. Its duration and damage are based on how many Bone Shield charges it consumes, so you really want to get up to 10, or ideally more like 11 or 12 before you hit it, and then be sure to Marrow Rend afterwards so that you don't get whacked with no Bone Shield up. Blood Drinker and Consumption are both really strong talents now. Blood Drinker is purely for single target, 
so raid. And consumption is great for AoE damage and resource generation. You want to use both of these talents pretty much on cooldown. The only bit of wiggliness here that I would say about consumption is that it does regenerate two runes, so you kind of want to have at least two runes on cooldown when you cast it. As for defensive cooldowns, Death Knight has four main defensive cooldowns, Icebound Fortitude, Vampiric Blood, Anti-Magic Shell, and Lichborn. I guess there's also Anti-Magic Zone, the fifth one, but the use case for that is pretty much when your group needs uh, some spell damage reduction, you throw down AMZ and you ping it and make everybody get in there, the end. Icebound Fortitude and Lichborn both reduce damage taken, pretty basic. And they also grant crowd control immunity, that's stun immunity for IBF, and uh, fear, sleep, charm for Lichborn. So they can be useful for either purpose. Vampiric Blood is your most commonly available defensive cooldown thanks to Red Thirst, and it's generally the best all around since it's just so universally useful. It, you know, are you in danger of dying? Press Vampiric Blood and Death Strike, and now you are not. Anti Magic Shell is the only somewhat complex defensive cooldown in the DK toolkit. You can use it to mitigate a lot of magic damage, and if you use it before a magic debuff would be applied, then no, it won't. If you use it after the debuff is already on you, then you're out of luck unless you are talented into Unyielding Will. That's pretty much all there is to that. Now let's talk about how to pull on a Blood DK. Opening up by getting Death and Decay down is super important, and if you're using Grip of the Dead, this has the added effect of keeping enemies super slow. They will basically be locked in place by the 90% slow from Death and Decay. You also want to get Bone Shield charges up and running immediately, so casting Death and Decay and then Death's Caress while you're still walking into melee range is usually a good idea. After that, you want to pop your collection of cooldowns as you get into melee range. So we're talking Dancing Rune Weapon, A-Bomb Limb, Raise Ghoul. Uh, once you get things a little bit more established, you're going to hit enemies with Consumption and uh, Bone Storm, kind of the whole, the whole range of cooldowns that you have. Once you're in melee range, you want to blood boil once or maybe twice to tag all the enemies in the pack and establish threat and dominance, and then use tombstone to get it on cooldown and begin your normal rotation by casting marrow ren, death strike, heart strike, and so on. And really, you're trying to get those bone shield charges up so you can use bone storm if you didn't already have them from the previous pull. You also want to use consumption early on in the pull as well. If you don't have cooldowns available, holding threat in AoE can be a little bit more difficult, but because DK has so many cooldowns now, that's probably going to be a fairly uncommon occurrence. As for stats, strength is the most important stat for DK. Whenever possible, you just want to maximize your item level. And then if you're comparing items at the same level, haste is the best. And the rest of the stats are all pretty good. Finally, you want to make sure to use Fallen Crusader as your weapon enchant. The alternatives are nowhere close to its value. Okay, that's Blood DK. It's been a really strong tank since I started playing it well over a decade ago, and it is only getting better and more fun in the War Within. I've really been enjoying it a lot, and I bet you will too. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.